Hey, this is Pastor Jackie. I'm excited tonight. Give people an opportunity to get signed on. I'll be right back. All right, everybody. It's eight o'clock. Hope you guys are doing well. I, it's good to be back in my own spot, right? I just uh, I I enjoyed the the trip out of town and all of that was nice, but you know, just nothing like being back at home in your own studio stuff. And I was playing games with ring lights and all kinds of stuff like that, trying to get get it together. Corvette clock is telling us it's time to start. I think it's maybe probably about 30 seconds off. Anyway, doesn't matter. Welcome. Glad that you're here. I am just excited to be back in the man cave, back in my spot. So just glad to be with you. Glad to have an opportunity to, to 
you know, talk about some of these things that, uh, well, I'm going to deal with an elephant in, in the room as I am dr striving to make you the smartest person in the room as it pertains to this topic. Um, I, but before I do that, though, I want to, let me grab this real quick. I want to give a shout out to uh, Pastor Freddie Pifus. He's actually done several things for me in my life. And he'd been a pastor, but he's also, uh, he was the spark. I believe it was 1992. And I, he, he taught from this book and I've just never been the same. I mean, since 92, I've been studying this topic. Can't get enough of it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, his encouragement. I appreciate uh, that he's putting together a prayer team as well to be praying for me as I delve over into these uh, I hate to say controversial because controversial sometimes makes it sound like you're trying to make something up and you, you know, no, just as I'm telling the truth, as I'm telling these stories, as I'm writing R I R I G H T, as I'm writing these stories, I appreciate all that he did. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm excited about the opportunity tonight to delve over into some things, and I am going straight for the jugular tonight. Um, how can I put this? There is a concerted effort out there to keep us from being able to learn what the truth is. There are people that don't want, they don't want us to, to learn about black biblical heritage, as well as what we're dealing with tonight, which is more secular uh, history than we're going to deal with biblical history. And as I said, there'll be times that we'll have to kind of do a little bit of both. But there's some scientific evidence that I want to get to you tonight that I think is crucial that that proves uh, we're going to talk about Ms. Ram. I'll kind of reset in a little bit so that everything is in order. But we're going to talk about Ms. Ram, and we're going to talk about his name is translated Egypt. Uh, the land should have continued to be just simply called Ms. Ram. There's a whole story around that. And some of what I'm going to say to you tonight is a bit of an introduction because you know, we're going to talk about the Almecs and we're going to talk more about them next week. We're going to talk about some findings in the Grand Canyon. I'm going to give you more detail next week. We're, go we're going to talk about how tonight, we're, we're just going to deal with the fact that these people traveled, the Egyptians traveled, and how. And that there is evidence that they traveled. And how. And it's amazing to me, all of these, listen, I, I, I've told you, I've got a binder full of this stuff. Man, I'm on page one. I keep finding all of these, all of these scholarly written, this evidence where, again, tonight I'm going to show you something. They were looking for one thing and ran right into the black man, black skinned man. Right, a simple test, not simple because it, it it's complex, but a test to determine something pertaining to drug use in the Egyptian culture, and then found out these people were black, and this kind of stuff just keeps happening over and over again. Why? Because we've been lied to for years. Okay, all right. Did I did I do my 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 basic? stuff here. Uh, this is this is, should be live on YouTube tonight. If it's not, I'll load it up on YouTube so that you have the opportunity to, to, to see it there. YouTube is good because it's stagnant, right? Also, I uh, want to remind you that I have a Monday through Friday drive time radio show and would love for you to connect uh, with me there. And, and, uh, you know, it's a variety of topics that are going on, this topic and other topics and just a variety of things that get talked about on the radio, including, you know, interviews and things like that. 
But this is the Urban Apologetics Channel. Thank you so much again for being here. We are dealing with black biblical history. And we're looking deep into it and, and, and seeking out an understanding of, of black-skinned presence in Scripture and exactly, you know, understanding what that means. So we're getting ready to have story time, adult story time. <laughs> and we're going to learn some things, you know, that, that again, are, as I always say, they're off the beaten path. Okay, so... Let's get rid of everything, and I've got a very short video that I want to show you. Uh, let me first give credit. It's from the movie Emperor, and this is just a, a minute and 14 seconds, but it's powerful and is a good springboard for what we're dealing with tonight. What? What? Just God's country, that's why. What, folks? We made this image. And in God's country, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> All right, so I may not have set that up perfectly. I apologize for that. But the story, this man has beat Emperor's son, that's his name, has beat his son, and he goes and he asks him, why did you do that? And the man says, because we're white, we can do whatever we want, and we're made in God's image. Now, here's the elephant in the room, a thing that we need to deal with. Governor DeSantos in Florida, you know, first of all, he's getting on these kids about wearing masks, but he doesn't want black history taught in schools. And that's going on all across the nation. I know Fox News started all of this. Uh, critical race theory was something that was written in the 80s, taught at the collegiate level. Nobody's trying to teach it in schools. And it's all of this uproar. People are so gullible. It is just unbelievable to me. I hate to say that because I know it sounds harsh and I want white people and black people that are listening to the information and I'm sharing you with you. But man, oh man, oh man, it's so easy to get people stirred up over something that isn't true. But I believe, and I'm speaking to believers now, I believe that a part of the problem is that second picture. That people have been indoctrinated to think that God himself would, would make one race superior to another. Now, we've gone over this before where I have shown you, you got to have melanin in order to make somebody black. The black race would not exist if they had not been first. And I've talked about the DNA evidence in Europe. As far as I can see, based on DNA evidence, Japheth, Noah's son, had to be black a black-skinned, a dark-skinned person because the people, when they're finding people in Europe, they're finding people that look like me and that aren't white. And there is a, there is a theory. Some scientists have done some work. They, they're, they're evolutionary scientists, so I don't agree with them 100%. But they're saying the white man's been around in terms of white skin about 4,200 years. I don't have a problem with that, though. Uh, just... I don't know about the number, the year, the date, because of how they date some other things. Third picture there. What is that telling you? These are all the people that have played characters pertaining to Egypt. Moving on into the lesson now. That, 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 that fourth picture there on the left, I really should be ashamed of myself. But for the very first time, I made some kale, 
soup with all kinds of organic vegetables and stuff like that. I, I don't know. How does stuff get in there? Last picture, picture number six. When you look at their faces, when you look at the, it, 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 let, me, let, me, let, me, let me throw this in while I'm, while I'm thinking about it. Let me throw this in. You see, I was looking at a piece of research recently. I may actually end up showing this to you. This piece of research shows, um, is, is trying to say that Egyptians are of Arab and European descent. And that's why you sometimes, not sometimes, when I'm talking about making you the smartest person in the room, listen, you got to research the researchers, right? I'm going to show you something tonight. I had to get it translated into English in order to share it. But listen, what I'm saying, what's so crazy about this is the person goes back like, uh, 1,300 years, and I'm not sure what the starting point is. That part was kind of confusing. And when they go back 1,300 years, well, yes, Egypt has been, there's been some conquering going on. There are some Europeans and Arabs. They still have, you know, kind of a, a you know, a darker tone, uh, maybe moving towards copper, you know, kind of what they look like now, but, but they're not going back far enough. But the tricky thing is, is that they're 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 using DNA evidence. They're using DNA evidence, and the DNA evidence is accurate. They're just not going all the way back. And then they mention two philosophers that agreed with them. Well, of course, if that's the era you're talking about, and one of those philosophers wasn't even born till 300 BC. It, 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 it is just a, and that's the, the reason that this stuff keeps going. It is a very convenient way, a very convenient way to alter the information to fit the narrative that you want to share. But I got you. Because I've gone back to, I can go back to the garden. DNA evidence has gone back to Noah. DNA evidence has gone back to the soil in the area where Adam was born. So this isn't just something off the top of my head. Gotcha. And, this, and listen, listen. I want you to trust scholarly sources. This is a scholarly source that I'm talking about. But scholars have lied for years. Just like I'm telling you that, that in Judah, the tribe of Judah is not the same as the Jews that are in Europe, in Russia, Germany, Spain, France. It's not the same people. They weren't there. It's not the same people. And they'll say, tradition says, I don't, I don't want, I don't even, I, I, you better get out of my face with that. Show me evidence. All right, let's move on. I've talked about this stuff before, but sometimes, I mean, it really, really, it just stirs you up because it's just such a hot mess. But do you think people knew the woman with an issue of blood that wanted to touch the hem of Jesus' garment if they knew that this was a black woman? If they knew that the people that lived in that area were black and that and it had stayed that way, no lie had ever occurred. Do you think things would be different? I mean, in the Ukraine, they weren't letting them get on trains. Tell them to go back and fight and they're not even from Ukraine. How are you running for your life and got time to be racist? Baffles my mind. Absolutely baffles my mind. And if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, 
a Christian, Christ-like. There are consequences for thinking that you are better than somebody else. The book of James talks about that. The Jews got in trouble for their arrogance over and over again. You're not better than anybody else. Nobody. Black, white, what? It doesn't matter. The Bible tells us that we're all the same in him. No separate judgment for those that are superior. Are you kidding me? Better repent and get that together. No matter, and, and let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. Let me be transparent. No matter how ugly the things that I see are, I make sure that I, I guard my heart so that I don't hate anybody, so that I don't become angry. Not that I'm not affected by the things that I see, but I can't let them rule my life. I can't let it take over and take root in my heart. The root of bitterness the Bible talks about. Be angry and sin not. Sin is, is submitting to the fact that I either think I'm better or somebody else needs to be punished or whatever. That's all God's business. My job is to tell you the truth. And yes, it might hurt. But when it's time to go into eternity, you don't have to worry about having something on your heart that God says, man, you should have dealt with that. Before you got up here with me, I told you, I warned you. Let's move on to our lesson. Let's get into the depth of it. All right. The sons of, of Ham, Cush, and Ms. Ram. All right. Ms. Ram is the one that we are talking about. I'm going to still do a little bit of a recap, but I'm going to do it fast. I just want to remind you that the Bible mentions Egypt at least 641 times. All right want to remind you that the Nubian territory, right? There were Egyptian kings that lived down in the area we would call Sudan. That's why there are more pyramids in the Sudan than there are in Egypt. Because it just, just, just determined, it was just, uh, it, it depended on where they wanted to live, right? Where they wanted to set up their kingdom, where their home was, that kind of thing. Now, we've gone over this before, but, but what I want you to, that first picture, the, 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 I mean, I've heard people say that aliens must have made the pyramids and all kinds of stuff, right? Because they were mathematical geniuses, the inventors of math. I've heard people try to say that Arabs did that but long before the Arabs stopped being nomads and, and, and living in the desert, the Egyptians were building pyramids. It's a lie. It's just a lie. These people were not only mathematical geniuses, but you are getting ready to see that they had talents and gifts in a variety of areas. Not because a Martian came down and showed them well, we know there's nobody living on Mars now. Somebody came from one of the other planets or out another. Come on, man. The map is showing you, and we're going to deal with some other maps. The map is showing you that the territory that they lived in was vast. It's a large kingdom. And it is important to note that that kingdom also covered what has become the Middle East. Now, the video I showed last week, right, Ham is Ram 1, the video that I showed last week, you should look at that video because I explained who created the term Middle East and why he created it. I'm not leaving a stone unturned. We're not finishing with Egypt this week. I'm not in a hurry. You in a hurry? I'm not in a hurry, especially when you're learning things that you hadn't, haven't heard before. Gaston Maspero made the statement, right, that the pharaohs were black. And I showed you, I don't have the magazine down here with me, but I showed you some information, um, a, a book, a, a magazine that I, that I got, that, that the National Geographic did on the black pharaohs. 
So go back. If you can find that somewhere, maybe it's possible to order it online or something like that. I want you to get that information. While I'm at it, let me hold these up real quick. Just get them on camera. These are great books. I will be sharing some information from these. I haven't done it yet, but I'll be sharing some information from these uh, at a later date. All right. So just you can pause your your uh, uh, the video if you're watching it on YouTube and you can get those uh, get those two books. OK, because I, I if I got it, I want you to have it. This is not me ever trying to, you know. I want you to be the smartest person in the room along with me when it comes to this. All right. So before Columbus. Now, one of the reasons that I'm showing you this title is I want you to know where this came from. This is a good website. I, I enjoyed what I read there, but it's getting on this stuff that's keeping me from, <laughs> gosh, keeping me from getting to the other stuff that I wrote a long time ago. But it's still, it's good. It's pertinent information. It's, 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 it's juicy, for lack of a better word. And I would love for you to, you know, to go to some of these websites that I'm showing you so that you can you can glean from them. These things have been vetted. So before Columbus, now Columbus didn't discover anything. Let me pause for a second and handle that. There were 500 native nations between the two continents. 500 Columbus didn't discover anything. And so a, a part of the problem that we have is, you know, until Europeans discover it, who really feel like they're the first explorers, which you're about to see is not true, until Europeans discover something, they, they it, it, ha, it, it doesn't belong to anybody or, you know. Columbus was a homicidal genocidal maniac. How we celebrate Columbus Day is beyond me. And there's a group of people, I believe it's in Ireland, that want him to receive sainthood. Columbus would hang your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your father, would hang them in the entrance of caves so that you would dig gold for him. He killed thousands of indigenous people. He don't get he he gets none from me. None. If he didn't repent, that's not somebody that we need to be celebrating. The strongest evidence of African presence in America before Columbus comes from the pen of Columbus himself. In 1920, a renowned American historian and linguist, uh, Leo Weiner of Harvard University, in his book, Africa and the Discovery of America, explained how Columbus, uh, Columbus noted in his journal that Native Americans had confirmed that black-skinned people had come from the southeast in boats trading in gold-tipped spears. Before him, he said it, you know, although this, be nice, Jackie, although he was lost and died thinking that he had been sailing to India, he didn't think he discovered a new land. He went to his grave thinking he had that's why the Indians are called Indians, because he thought he had gone to India. He didn't discover anything. The sucker was lost. But if they tell you something in school over and over again, you buy into it, you think it's true. Africans went all over Atlantic waters, even in, you know, what we might call primitive boats. And it may seem unlikely or perhaps far-fetched to some such incredible nautical achievements are not as daunting as they may seem. 
given that numerous successful modern attempts have illustrated that without an oar, rudder, or sail, ancient African boats, including the dugout, would certainly have been able to cross the vast ocean in a matter of weeks. Now, are you, are you, are, I, I, I want to make sure you're listening. All right, here's a sample of the boat. I want to make sure you're listening because I'm about to tell you something that most people, most, I would almost say 100% of the people that are watching this have no idea. And that is this. The ocean has currents, has rivers. And if you discover where these streams are, Yes, without a sail, they will take you, just as the article just said, without a sail, they'll take you exactly where you're trying to go. That's why we have stories of the Aborigine making it to South America. Story for another time, but I got the evidence. That's why it is possible if you look at this map, crude, you might not be able to see everything there, but you can see those lines. Of course they can make it to America. They can make it to South America and they can make it to North America from Africa, from, G from Egypt. Gets, need to get to a place where they can follow these currents and these currents will take them. I mean, we got one line there taking you to Florida, another one taking you to Mexico, and that'll make sense next week when we talk about the Almec. I'll make sure that I, that I uh, the Almec heads, I'll make make sure that I use this map again. I got more than one. You're going to see another one in just a second. So it's possible. It's been proven in modern times, as the article said, it is definitely possible. One of the first documented instances of African sailing and settling in the Americas, were black Egyptians led by King Ramses III during the 19th dynasty. Now, we'll talk about the 25th uh, next week. In 1292 BC, now that pokes a hole in that 1300 years, if they're depending on where they're starting with that date. Deal with that some other time. In fact, in 445 BC, the Greek historian Herodias wrote of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh's great seafaring and navigational skills. Further concrete evidence noted by Dr. Imahotep and largely ignored by Eurocentric archaeologists includes Egyptian artifacts found across. Oh, we're going to deal with this next week, y'all. This is just an introduction. Found across North, North America from the Algonquin writings of the East Coast to the artifacts. Here it is, an Egyptian place names in the Grand Canyon. I'm not only going to talk about a city in the Grand Canyon, I'm going to tell you who discovered it. When he discovered it, the article that was written about it. Old, because this, this is the early 19, I think it was 1902. But clear evidence of a, of a roped off city, for lack of a better word, that you're not allowed to visit. There are some scientists that have gone in there, but a city, underground city, that can hold up to 50,000 people, they estimate. Black folks were here first. And how did they do it? They followed the currents that I'm telling you about. And they were explorers and adventurers. They had great navigational skills. Right? They, they, were, they were astronomers. And astrology is in there too, but they knew how to follow the stars. That would help guide them to where they were trying to go. All right, I'm going to read something to you 
that um you know i was i was i was i was piecing this together and i was thinking you know that i would you know do the same thing i just did like just show you an excerpt of it but turned out that that wasn't going to work because there's just so much information here now let me help you with this the the website is bizsizz Dot com. Let me spell it. B I Z S I Z I Z dot com. One more again. B I Z S I Z I Z dot com. Now it has a, when you go there and you look up 5,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians sailed to America, and here's the evidence. When you go there, um, uh, look for, you know, right after the title, there'll be a piece there that says English. If you don't hit that button, God bless you trying to read that. Because it's not, uh, it's not, it's not even using, not only is it not in English, the, the words are, I can't even, these letters, it's just crazy. Okay. So make sure you hit that button or you're going to, you'll be lost. But this is real research that has been done, and this will kind of identify some of the battle that goes along with this. All right, so 5,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians sailed to America, and here's the evidence. Cocoa, listen, and tobacco found in ancient Egyptian mummies. Is this the ultimate evidence of trans-oceanic, oceanic, sorry, voyages 5,000 years ago? What if the ancient Egyptian civilization was much more advanced than we ever imagined? After all, they are the rightful owners of some of the most impressive ancient structures on the surface of the planet. It is hard to believe that they could construct powerful vessels that would have allowed them to travel to other continents. According to DNA, there we go, analysis performed on ancient Egyptian mummies, this is not, uh, this may not just be another crazy conspiracy. Dr. Svelta Bala Banova was left in total disbelief when she saw the result of her own analysis the prestigious German medical examiner had been commissioned to analyze several mummies looking for traces of drug use in the rulers of ancient Egypt. What she found was considered to be a history changer. After analyzing several ancient mummies, the researcher discovered the presence of high levels of cocaine, nicotine, and I'm going to I'm going to do this perfectly. Tetra hydra cannabinol. It's going to come up again. Hopefully I'll do it well again. In bodies that were preserved for thousands of years. With scientific rigor, Dr. Bella Bonova repeated the test several times and sent samples to other laboratory other laboratories for independent testing. All successful, all successful analyzed confirm the uh, initial results. Sorry, somebody translated from another language, didn't come out real clear. Ancient mummies had high levels of cocaine, nicotine, and tetrahydrocannabinol. <laughs> but were but where did the ancient Egyptians obtain the products from? Despite finding evidence that scientific the scientific community was skeptical, remained skeptical, skeptical, accusing the researchers who had made the discovery of incompetence. Why? Because it's going to change the narrative. This discovery that these Egyptians had traveled is going to change the narrative. They argued, they, they, excuse me, 
Then they went on to argue that they were contaminated until it was shown that it is impossible to contaminate the inner stem of hair. Then they claimed that the experiments were not reproducible until an independent group of experts found traces of cocaine and nicotine in the Egyptian mummies in the British Museum. So these were, they, they, they were already there. They already had, you know, this wasn't something that was brought in by these scientists, right? And so there's no way that it could have been tampered with in any way whatsoever. Finally, they ended up defending the indefensible. The tobacco and coca did not come from South America, but rather were very rare varieties of African origin. But no evidence of coca or tobacco cultivation was ever found in Africa, Europe, or Asia before the time of Christopher Columbus. What the mummies tell us is an intolerable story for history as we have learned in school. Coca and tobacco are undoubted, uh, undoubtedly originating in South America. So it wouldn't be in their bodies without it, right? It is impossible that the ancient Egyptians, it is, is it possible that the ancient Egyptians traveled somehow to the American continent thousands of years ago? Or could this be evidence enough that a highly advanced civilization existed on earth thousands of years ago? I mean, you got to come up with something crazy if you're not going to believe that. A civilization that had knowledge and technologies that neither the Egyptians nor the Greeks nor the Romans had at the time. Whatever it may have been, many authors agree that this is irrefutable proof that the ancient Egyptians had contact with products that originated halfway around the globe on the American continent. Halfway around the globe on the American continent. I mean, they traveled on those rivers that I talked about. There's other DNA evidence. You know, we're just, we're, we're, we're kind of scratching the surface. But let me let me give you a marinating period. We're almost done. Let me let me give you a marinating period. See, tonight, a lot of people want to argue with the Bible. Tonight, we're not, we're not arguing, uh, arguing scripture. I mean, we certainly can do both. We're talking about science. Picture, top right. All those people have black features. Tutankhamun, top, top, I'm sorry, top left was the first set of pictures. Top right, Tutankhamun. They did DNA research on him. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm out of time. I didn't, you know. They did DNA research on him. And their discovery with him is that he's a black man. DNA evidence proving it. DNA evidence showing that some of those same chemicals are in his body. As, as I explained before, there's nothing special about Tutankhamun. He died at about 19 years old. But the difference with him and some others is that his tomb hadn't been robbed. It was intact. But these are, these are black folks, folks. These are black folks. Throughout this story, and there's more and more and more evidence. Every Monday, 8 p.m., I got more for you. We're going to talk about the Almics, the Almic people in South America next week. I'm Pastor Jackie Jackson. This is the Urban Apologetics Channel. And I look forward to continuing to just blow your mind with all of this evidence. We'll see you next time. May God bless you. Bye-bye.